Yo, what's up, Swag Gang? You already know what time it is, man. It's your boy Keon Laurie, man. AKA Keon Swag. Back here with a video, man. Look, man, it's time to pay some bills, man. Shout out to Cash Nasty. I'm just playing. Um, but yeah, man, the haters guide to the 2021 NFL season, man. Look, bro, you guys wanted me to react to urinating trees, so here you go. Let's get into it. The playoffs are a beautiful thing. I love them. But you know what I love more? Shitting on teams that deserve it. I'm a stubborn bastard, and so are those that didn't make it past the regular season. But it's okay for those 15 teams that are out. We've got some fantastic prizes to give them for participating. That's right, the Everyday 25s from Raycon. The sponsor of today's video, Raycon, is revolutionizing the earbud market with name brand sound at half their price. Look at all of the colors. Raycon! The sleek design. The booming bass. Come Bo slash you It's three. dead. This is some Raycons, man. Is it me? And it's not just for watching TV, but for yard work, exercise, Get into it. around. There's nothing else to say on that front. The everyday E25s are far more reliable than the teams that didn't make it. Let's take a look at them now. You are absolutely pathetic. There's nothing else to say. Every time you attempt to do something, you fail. Every golden gift and great player you are handed, you ruin within a fortnight. Are you ever going to not fuck up at anything? <laughs> Even making coffee. Can you keep the grinds out of the pot? From what I've seen this season, I couldn't trust you to tie your fucking shoes without keeling over. Damn. Remember every single fear we had about them? All the pessimism came true. And then some. You wanted to end it tying the league record for consecutive losses, but that's merely an appetizer. Nothing stops this train of pain. Not firing Ralph Krueger, not hiding in the shadows, not leaving every piece to rot. Nothing. Now the time has come to pay for becoming the new Cleveland Browns. Jack Eichel is livid. And it's not just that? the losing. He's at odds with the team due to his shoulder injury. They've handheld Sam Reinhardt all the way to free agency. And he might want out too. Linus Allmark is a UFA as well. I've seen enough of this shit show to say this with confidence. Just blow it up. I have no hope that you're going to do anything right whatsoever, so you might as well dismantle. Maybe you'll be good in about 20 years on accident. <clears throat> at least it got a touch better for them this season. I'm not going to say this year was any good, but considering how the last one went, I'll let them take their small victories and token accomplishments. The Devils have a long, long way to go, and the rebuild has fallen behind by about three years. But there are some things to kind of be hopeful about. They have some promising pieces in the core. They're not Buffalo. Who am I kidding? By all stretches of the imagination, this was a bad season and should result in the team looking further into overhauling a stale rebuild. When you lose 16 of 18, there are no good feelings to have. But once again, with a year as bad as last, anything looks good afterwards. I won't beat the dead horse any further, but please do something about that awful defense. Wow. I know you can't trade Subban, but you can try to care, right? You can't laugh at them much harder. Their penalty kill is doing more than enough of that. As the winds blow, so does the turmoil on all my rangers. A season full of chaos and uncertainty only grew worse than Tony D'Angelo's reputation on the team. <laughs> Artemi Panarin was threatened by Russian interests and fearing for his family took a leave of absence to bribe a few politicians. As the group struggles to round into form, tantalizing for only bits at a time, an evil rat comes to sabotage the team. Tom Wilson is a hated man in these parts. And his antics help to break the franchise. Oh, Panarin oh, was hurt shit. in the scuffle and was taken out for the rest of the ass. season. With his powerful pose oh, this and hockey shit box, the funny. NHL took matters into their own hands. And find him $5,000. No suspension. James Dolan was livid and wrote an angry letter to the editor threatening to never go to their store again unless he gets a lot of free shit. He was the only one in the executive branch that believed his own statement. Yeah. Even with this schism, Dolan is growing impatient. And the time was right to fire everyone. Wait a minute, why the fuck are you blowing it up? I get the team had no grit and a bad defense, but all you had to do was fire Quinn, not everything. Jesus Christ. As the offseason brings far more questions than answers, we wonder if the Rangers will overcompensate with a team full of grit and veteranosity. The only way to truly find out is to tune in for the next season of All My Rangers. Damn, what a joke. Cup contenders. We thought the Flyers were cup contenders this season. I swear, this shit happens every time we think Philly's going to do something. We get fooled by their strong season. Now their goaltending's coming around, the youth developing in the system. We say, this is the year the Flyers make themselves known. To be fair, we were right. 
They've made themselves known as a shit heap. Team defense has been destroyed time and time again. Damn! Prospect after prospect being ruined under the watchful eye of Broad Street. Ivan Provorov being ruined. Travis Sanheim being ruined. Oh. Shane Gostisberg, don't get me started on how the Flyers botched his Holy trajectory. <laughs> and then the goaltending. Remember when Philly thought their relentless woes in net were over? That's hilarious. Carter Hart didn't just regress, he plummeted into a completely different ether. I haven't seen something like this crash since the stock market in 1929. This is what happens when you put all of your eggs into one basket, Philly. You better make sure you fucking insulate them. Ooh. That defensive structure, the only sure thing happening is destruction. Rangers fans tried to warn you about AV hockey. These are the results you get with it. Good luck overhauling the defense this offseason. Well, that miracle run they were on was good while it lasted. We were all shitting our pants. Blackhawks. Good. After pivoting towards a rebuild, without two of their best players on the ice, something's got to give here, right? It did. The team fell off after Kevin Lincoln and couldn't play God and carry the franchise. Even with the disappointing end, you can't say this was a bad year whatsoever. There are some intriguing pieces for the future to look at. Not just Lankinen, but Suter, Kurashev, Hagel, Bokefist, Kalanuk, even Henestroza had a revival. Do I think they can go far with what they have now? No, but these next few drafts should help out in this regard. A few free agent signings with the old core slowly fading away, and they're back in the mix. Andrew Shaw was forced to retire due to concussion issues, but I wonder Ooh. how Teams fits into the mix next year. There are a lot of options they have this offseason. I'm interested to see which ones they take. There is no joy in Buckeye Town. There is only anguish and frustration. When is it going to be our turn to do something? When are we going to have a stable core? It'll probably be a bit. Look at the horrors they experienced this season. Pierre-Luc Dubois doing his best impersonation of the Leafs in a Game 7 at the start of the year. He was flipped for a package that included Patrick Laine, who has failed to mesh with anything in Columbus. He's Damn. developed O'Reilly's disease. He's lost his passion for the game. Oh, we got him. Miko Koivu retired early on. Severe Damn. injuries to guys like Zach Wierenski. They are not playing in hockey, bro. Like, God damn, man. Y'all are not playing around, bro. Like, Y'all are really... This might be worse than football. It, I mean, it, it looks like it. Massive regression on all points of the roster, particularly with Seth Jones and goaltending. This year was a disaster, and it's only going to get worse. Mount Tortorella has gone dormant. It was a few years after I thought he'd be gone, but his shtick had worn thin. To add to the pain, Seth Jones wants out as well. For years upon years, the Jackets have had to start over. After their all-in year in 2019, they had to start over. And now, they have to start over. Someday they hope to find stability. There might be a better chance of them being able to recruit five-star athletes like Ohio State does. Maybe last year's improbable run was a flash in the pan. Is it a bad thing if I believe that the Stars should have given us more this season? Even if a good bit of it wasn't their fault? Jason Robertson's emergence can only do so much for all the injuries they had to deal with. Sagan, Bishop, and Radulov, among others, out long term. But even Damn, then, that doesn't Damn, surgery? Story. Dallas still paid tribute hurt. to recent squads they put out and couldn't score much of anything. Goaltending took a significant step back. It's a bit harder to win games when Anton Hudobin isn't literally playing God. Wow. By the time they got it together and found some form, it was too late. Wow. Nashville had escaped their talent. Wow. The stars will go hungry tonight. And there isn't much they can do to fix it. Just hope they can get healthy and regroup. There are signs they can bounce back, but I don't know if another cup run is going to be in their future. Damn. This is interesting. Really interesting. Yeah, I'm gonna order that tomorrow. I'll give Eiserman credit for that smooth fleecing of the Capitals for a guy who had played himself off the core. That was some nice work. Now they just need about 10 more trades like that. That's a nice ass goal. For as bad as they've been, at least they can say this. They've gotten better. It was from the absolute nadir, but it's still better than nothing. They have promising prospects. I'm gonna lie, bro. If I played hockey, bro, I would be playing everybody on the ass. I would be playing everybody on the ass, bro. I really would, man. Will hopefully do better than the last haul and batch has done at this level. I think their bad power play numbers reinforce the urgency to fix this matter. Their top active scorer was Adam Ernie and Philip Pronick had the most points on the team. That's all that needs to be said. Even then, something incredible is happening in Detroit. Jeff Blaschel is still the head coach. 
In a league where people can be hired and fired in the span of 15 minutes, the Wings have stayed uncharacteristically loyal to their man. They must think that hot streak they went on at the end of the year was a sign of progress. If you can call it a hot streak, it was more like a we-don't-suck-thank-God phase. At the very Damn. least, they made an improvement by parting ways with Dan Bilesma. Anyone who has bore witness to that man, Coach, understands how this is a positive. Damn. Manage the power play. That's all that needs to be said. Failures. Absolute failures. Damn, you put them on That's what this organization ass. is. How many times must you try the same things over and over again, yet expect different results? For far too often, Calgary has done nothing to address the real issues on the team. It came to a head this year. No, they just have to double down on the pass by bringing in Daryl Sutter to coach. Hmm. It would be fine, even though they have massive consistency issues and still can't break ground in the north. They pissed it so hard they couldn't assert themselves at the slow table. More underachieving. It's absolute insanity. Enough is enough. You tried to keep the course tax some plywood on a buckling dam and predictably failed. Now you're going to do it my way. You ready for my proposal? Bye-bye, Goudreau. Bye-bye, Monaghan. Bye-bye, Giordano. I have six years of evidence to prove this is the right course of action. Calgary has not and will not go deep in the playoffs with the score. You must overhaul it. This team needs a shakeup in a serious way. Brad Tree Living himself has gone on record saying that the Flames need to make changes. I'd start with the GM himself first, and then keep going. Maybe then they'll get different results. Sometimes the best moves for a team are made out of necessity. At the beginning of the year, the Senators were a literal no-man's land. Wow. Every single off-season acquisition had blown up in their faces, hearkening them back to their expansion days. Futility abound, but thankfully they took it personally. Wow. Things got better. A bit better, at least. With a desperate situation, the Senators decided to play the youth. Nothing to lose with how bad they are, and now they finally have some hope for the future. A burgeoning core, emerging talent, skill on display throughout the lineup. A God damn, bro. All, all I'm seeing is dudes getting put on their damn ass. Like, wow. Like, this ain't better than football. I mean, when it comes to hitting, but damn, man, they are really getting put on their ass, bro, and getting embarrassed, man. System. They may make the playoffs in the next few years if they're lucky. If even bolder, they could have a greater upside than the Montreal Canadiens. The run they had might be because they're in the north, but with how barren Ottawa has been, they'll take it. Now, if only you could release team owners, I'd have more optimism about them. Stop me if you've heard this one. Eugene Melnick meddling in shit he has no experience in and throwing a bitch fit when he doesn't get his way. Damn. I'm just waiting for the put him out there. suit against He put him out there like that. He just said he, th he throws a bitch fit. Like, damn, you're an tree? In an ever-changing world, Did that man dirty? It's here to help. Think of it. When I was looking at this team before the season, I thought the Canucks could finally take that next step and become legitimate foes again. That run of form last season, Thatcher Demko playing out of his mind, the impressive youth. It was easy to think they'd do something besides spew hot oil on the ice. This is how Jim Benning has been able to fail upwards over the years. He puts on an appearance of confidence, yet when you go to test drive the damn car, it breaks down and explodes when making the first turn. To say this year was a travesty for Vancouver is like me saying that region's real estate is vastly overpriced. And I know what the excuse is going to be. Oh, but it's the COVID, Francesco. All I need is 10 more years and we can get back to the cup. No, no, Canucks. You were hot garbage long before the COVID outbreak. Thatcher Demko can't save everything. Braden, Braden Holpe can't, can't save anything. anything. Quinn, Hughes Quinn Hughes couldn't, couldn't defend, defend against, against a child. child. Jake Vertanen's only offensive moves were against women. It leads to a pure shit show that smells as vile as a West Coast seaport. You want to know what's funny? You'd think this regression would lead to changes, but nope. Benning and Green are staying put. Why the fuck is Jim Benning still here? Because he feels that he needs to be aggressive in the offseason? Yes, because Benning doing that hasn't totally damaged the team beyond repair before, hasn't it? Normally for a rebuilding team, I would try to highlight the positives of what they're doing, the strides they're trying to make. I'm more forgiving towards them than I should be because they've at least admitted that they need to start fresh after their windows had slammed shut. But the Anaheim Ducks are not one of these teams. If anything, they drastically underachieved this season. He said underachieved. On this <laughs> roster, there is no way they should be struggling to score as badly as they have. You'd think that Honda Center was in the Sahara. I, I, I scored better than them. <laughs> scored better the than desert, them. There's such a drought in there. Look at their power play. Normally, I just point and laugh, but a season tally of sub 9%? That shattered the fucking record set over 20 years ago. 
What is Aikens doing? Did he learn anything from Edmonton? Is it the players? Is it how they shower? What the hell is it? Yes, there's some good talent on the way as well, but more of it is heading out. Ryan Getzloff is a free agent and might be gone. Ryan Miller is now the greatest goaltender to never make a cup final, not named Cujo. Not to mention the sad twilight of David Beckis. These next few months will be crucial, especially with the total lack of sync on the team. John Gibson can't carry them forever. This season proved it. You know, I got a lot of flack for how I judged the Coyotes this season. You're being too harsh on them. They may have made a ton of mistakes, but they're finally on the right track. The rest of their division is giving way to let them have the right to be destroyed by Colorado or Vegas in the first round. Say what you will about the humiliating expose on their ownership and management practices or the fact that nobody can score its progress. I would share in these hollow victories if it weren't for one thing. They collapsed again. They fucking collapsed again. With every single thing aligning for them, they still can't get out of their own way. We saw it last year. This team is nothing without goaltending playing over their heads. They didn't get it this time. And that's why they lost 12 of 15 down the stretch. Damn! The positive of April was Michael Bunting coming out of nowhere. Kachina Land still has issues scoring goals. And it cost Rick Tockett his job. Yo, man, if you guys still watching this video, bro, let me know what is the cardio, or like, what is the workouts that hockey players do, man, to keep their body in shape, bro? Let me know down below, man. There was no pandemic to save them like last year. There are still too many questions to take them seriously. I won't pass judgment that quickly, but without some of Bill Armstrong's most trusted lieutenants are already resigning, this might be just as rough as Jake. This is a very special show. Take his tenure. They're better off than Anaheim and San Jose at this point in time. They can at least thump their chests in the war for California. I wouldn't be fooled into thinking they're turning the corner, but there are positive signs. Drew Doughty wasn't as inhumanely bad as he was the last few seasons. Better feelings, yeah. Piece of their core in Jeff Carter. Cal Peterson looks to be the goalie of the future. There are some intriguing prospects on the way, but there is much work to be done. Wow. The Kings are a couple of years away before they will be ready for a deep push if all goes well. The key for them is how the new faces will take over for the old guard. Wow. Will the ending of the baton be smooth or rough going? Looks like there could be upside here, but these next few years are going to be very telling in regards to their long-term outlook. <laughs> They've got some cap to play with in the offseason, and I expect they'll be aggressive in making a push. I just hope they make the right decisions. Did you hear the news, everyone? Patrick Marlowe broke the NHL's games played record. Wow. What a beautiful day. Just ignore the fact that WAJ stats aren't counted, and if they were, Gordie Howe would crush every other contender for this title, but that's not important. The fact that the San Jose Sharks are a literal rotting carcass on the beachhead is. Marlowe is cooked, and he's the least of their issues. The majority of that core is aging like curdled milk basking in the sun. Vander Kane's still good, but with his bankruptcy proceedings, it may be tricky to maneuver around. Damn. The team is dead, overpaid, underperforming, literal trash. Even when they had a chance to be doomed as the fourth seed in the West, they decided to imitate past performances and choke away the opportunity. They ended the year losing 15 of 19. Damn! With that so-called skill, their power play was one of the worst in the damn league. Sub 5% Whoa. in April. This passes as a playoff contender these days. I wonder how many fools still think Eric Carlson is elite. Wait, hold on. He is elite at turning the puck over in his own zone. You say you don't want to be part of a rebuild, Eric? Too bad that contract is a massive albatross and you're doing your best David Clarkson impression. They desperately need to rebuild. But it doesn't seem like anyone cares in the organization. Not with that sluggish core. If they're lucky, they'll offload a bad contract or two for a few coffins. Their Crazy. fans are going to be dead after all this failure. And tonight's Damn, man. Golly. But anyways, man, we should have a hard look. If you guys were the 10K, I'll see you guys in the next video.